After doing the first part of top 10 organized crime manga, I found out that the list was not doing justice to this genre, as there were many more mangas out there that deserved a place on this list. So that's why I decided to do a second part for this list and here we are. Today we are going to look at some of the best, violent, brutal and well written organized crime manga to read. But if you haven't watched the first part yet, then check it out by clicking on the i button right now. And without any further ado, let's start with the 10th number which is taken by the title Black Joke. Despite many other reviews being negative and calling it a mediocre, I quite enjoyed it. The art is solid but the story is almost non-existent. But this manga's greatest strength is a actually legitimately mature tone. Most manga with this level of violence takes themselves too seriously and go into edgy territory. It is actually quite hard to explain the tone but it's genuinely funny and a bit of a black joke if you will. Japan is now the 51st state of the USA and the Isle of Neon located near Japan is the only place where prostitution and gambling are legal. There, Italian Mafia, Chinese Triads, Yakuza fight each other to gain the control of the casinos and brothels. That's it. That's the basic premise of this manga but to sum it up, if you are looking for an interesting story, you have come to the wrong place. If you are looking for genuinely likeable characters and a fun yet mature mood and setting, then this is as good as it gets in my opinion. On the next number, the manga is Tokyo Yamimushi. Kato Ryo owns a lot of money that he has no way of repaying. When he is violently kidnapped by thugs, he is terrified that they are finally going to kill him. But to his surprise, he is offered a chance to live by becoming an underling in an organized crime gang. Relieved to have escaped death and impressed by handlers, the cool and competent Asamura Kato rises to the challenge. Now it's sink or swim as the young man embraces this new phase of his life. The art was so focused and centered but still so different. And mangas like this are the reason why seinen will always be my favorite. And I will always hold the utmost biased opinion about every seinen manga. But trust me, if this was truly bad, I wouldn't even waste my time reading it in the first place. If you are looking for a great read and ran out of interesting manga, you gotta read this one for sure. On the next number, the manga is Koroshi Ai. The silent and stoic Chetu Dankworth is a bounty hunter. Her target is Song Ryang Ha, a notorious killer known for the killing of 18 high class officials in a single night. To this day, his murders remain swift, efficient and bloody. However, after Song Ryang Ha overpowers Chetu in their first encounter, he reveals his own intentions. He too is after her, but he is aiming for her heart. Song Ryang Ha's attempt to catch her eye are quite unique. He offers gifts to her in the form of her current targets, tied up and battered, and will do anything to spend more time together. Reluctantly, Chetu also goes along with this act and so begins the cat and mouse game of love between two killers. On the seventh number, the manga name is Gift Plus Minus. With the growing demand for high quality organ transplants in Japan, many underground organizations have carried out kidnapping and murder operations to obtain organs for sell. Surgeon doctors also started practicing. It even began to intervene in outside countries like China. Our protagonist Tamaki Suzuhara, a beautiful but mysterious high school girl tries to find someone very important to her who is currently missing. She joins an illegal organ trafficking network which kidnapped those who were judged morally cure for morphological surgical removal of organs. Let's see where this bloody journey of Tamaki Suzuhara's moral dilemma will lead. Can she find what she needs? Read Gift Plus Minus to know more about it. On the sixth number, the manga is Ouroboros. Ryuzaki Iko and Tatsuya Danno once belonged to a happy family of orphans at Mahoroba Orphanage. Their below teacher Yuiko cared for them and nurtured them. To Ryuzaki and Tatsuya, she meant the world to them. Thus, one late night, their whole world fell apart when they witnessed her tragic murder. Though the young pair testified that a man shot their teacher, the police forced them to keep quiet. And so, they realized that this murder case contains a darker truth, one which is hidden by authorities. With no one else to trust, Ryuzaki and Tatsuya decides to work within the shadows to catch the seemingly influential culprit. Even if they end up dirtying their hands, the only justice that matters to them is the truth behind Yuiko's death. 15 years later, Ryuzaki joins the Shinjuku police force and becomes the second department's top investigator. 
while he secretly works with Tatsuya, who is now a high-ranking member of the Yakuza. Fueled by vengeance and love for their teacher, the two friends join forces to find the culprit, vowing to exact revenge upon the evil who took their world away. On the next number, the manga is Yamekin Ushijima-kun. For those who are desperate for cash, drowning in vice and debt, and with no other means to attaining money lawfully, one is eligible for an absurd offer, a cash loan with an interest rate of 50% to be paid back in 10 days. That is the service Karu Ushijima, the loan shark, offers. In a society in which he believes one cannot live without either taking advantage of or being taken advantage of, Ushijima strives to be the former. Operating in the black market and issuing loans to those he knows that cannot afford the principal, let alone the mounting interest. However, he intends to have every yen he gives out to be paid back in full. Yamekin Ushijima kun follows Ushijima as he wrings his dues out of his customers, believing all of his clients to be undeserving of his compassion. Whether it be prostitution, identity theft, or extortion, there are no miseries Ushijima is unwilling to put his customers through as he journeys through the underworld. On the fourth number, the manga name is Phantom, Requiem for the Phantom. Mafia is rife in America where assassinations are a regular occurrence on the streets. Inferno, a mysterious company, is behind most of these dealings through the use of their nearly invincible human weapon, Phantom. One day, a Japanese tourist accidentally witnesses Phantom's latest murder. Desperate to escape, the tourist hides in the secluded building. However, Phantom, revealed to be a young woman named as Ayn, and the leader of Inferno captures the tourist and brainwashes him. Given the name as Wei, this once peaceful tourist is now a puppet of Inferno with no memories. Drawn into the world of lies, deceit and violence, Zwei must fight to survive. Hopefully one day he will regain his memories and escape from the world where he is constantly on the brink of death. On the third number, the manga name is Kizudara Keno Jinsei. Jinsei Nagai, as known as Bare Knuckle Jinsei, born in a dumpster, raised in an orphanage and living as a Yakuza, he is tough enough that he fights all of his fights barehanded and is covered with countless knives and bullet scars from his battles. But his life changes when he saves the 5-year-old Ayumi, daughter of the new police chief, Masayoshi Enjoji and befriends their family. For the first time in his life, Jinsei feels like he's found a family of his own but his past and his ties to the Yakuza keeps getting in the way. Can Jinsei Nagai live a normal life after this? Find out by reading Kizu Darake no Jinsei. On the second number, the manga name is Kumicho Musume to Sewagakari. Toru Kirishima is a 28-year-old man and the Wakagashira of the Sakuragi group. He is known as the demon of the Sakuragi group because he uses the position as a Yakuza as an excuse to do whatever he wants. But one day, he ends up in the charge of his boss's daughter. Read this heartwarming comedy and action manga of Kumicho Musume to Sewagakari. And finally on the first number, the manga is Sun Ken Rock. The story revolves around Ken, a man from an upper class family that was orphaned young due to his family's involvement with the Yakuza. He became a high school delinquent known for fighting. The only thing that motivates him to take action is through his romantic affection with a classmate Yumi. After learning that she decided to move to Korea to become a police officer, Ken leaves his beautiful life in Japan behind and tries to follow Yumi's footsteps. Due to the unforeseen circumstances, he accidentally becomes the head of a local gang and tries to hide it from Yumi. As the leader, the gang is now renamed to Sunken Rock Group. Can Ken hide this thing from Yumi? And what are the problems that he will face while doing that? The art style of Sunken Rock is absolutely amazing. So if you haven't read this one and if you like gangster manga, then you should definitely check out Sunken Rock. Have you read any of the mangas listed in this video? And do you know any other mangas that are not in this video but are worth reading? If yes, then put their titles in the comment section down below. And that's it for today's video guys. If you enjoyed this video, then check out my other two videos about gangster and mafia, anime and manga over here. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more regular anime content. And that's it and I will see you in the next one. Sayonara.